Hello everyone, this is Dr. Tushan Mehta. I'm an orthopedic surgeon and your faculty of orthopedics. And today this video is about the MCQs of orthopedics uh, that came in the Foreign Medical Graduate Entrance Exam in January 2024. Uh, there was a question uh, allegedly according to the recall from the students. So there was a question related to this X-ray. <laughs> Now, in this X-ray, what you are looking at right now is number one, a fracture of the head of the radius. Number two, you are looking at fracture of the coronoid process of ulna. Uh, third thing that you are looking at is posterior elbow dislocation. Uh, let me tell you that when you combine these three injuries together, you land up into something which is what is called as Hotchkiss Terrible Triad. So it is one of the worst elbow injuries that can happen to someone. And as I said, it's a triad. So it includes number one, posterior elbow dislocation. Number two, it includes fractured head of radius. Number <clears throat> three, it includes fracture of the coronoid, not of the olecranon. So this is not fracture olecranon. No, I mean, this is not fracture olecranon. This is not only fracture head of radius. This is not Montegia fracture. So answer is D, that is terrible triad of Hotchkiss. So this was the first question as per the recall of the students. <laughs> Second question was that eight-year-old sustained fracture around elbow two years ago and has difficulty in hanging the school bag. Now, uh, see, when you see this photograph and when you see that a child, uh, that a child had a fracture two years ago uh, around elbow, so you do not expect any other fracture other than supracondylar fracture humerus. Why do I say that? See, if they ask you overall most common fracture, then I'm sure we all know that answer is clavicle. If they ask you most common fracture in a newborn, then of course, answer is clavicle. If they ask you most common, now newborn is growing up. Now, if they ask you most common fracture in children, then answer has to be green stick fracture of radius and ulna. But if they categorically ask you most common fracture seen in children around elbow, <laughs> then answer has to be supracondylar fracture humerus. Now, in this fracture, guys, the most common complication will always be malunion. And this malunion will always be cubitus varus. And cubitus varus is something that is what we know by the name of gun stock deformity, where the part distal to cubitus goes towards midline. The part distal to elbow goes towards midline. So this is elbow. The part distal to that is forearm. Forearm is going towards midline. So it is a clear-cut case of cubitus varus, which is developed due to <coughs> supracondylar fracture humerus. So this was the correct answer. Third question. In a patient with localized bone pain, exaggerated in night, relieved by intake of aspirin. Now, aspirin is a very key word. Why? Because aspirin is a salicylate. Salicylate is a nonsteroidal anti-inflammatory drug. Nonsteroidal anti-inflammatory drug has mechanism of action, which is inhibition of prostaglandin synthesis. Now, how prostaglandin is important, guys? <clears throat> there is a tumor called as osteodosteoma which is supposedly the most common true benign bone tumor. But not only that, in osteodosteoma, this is one fact that everybody knows that it is the most common true benign bone tumor. But what is more important in osteodosteoma is for you to understand that there is a central radiolucent lesion. So this central radiolucent lesion that you see in osteodosteoma is actually called as nidus, where nidus means nest which has a diameter of less than 2 cm but humongously abundantly rich in prostaglandins although it is surrounded by a thick peripheral it is surrounded by a thick peripheral reactive sclerotic rim and by the way this thick peripheral reactive sclerotic rim is what is called as osteoma and this central nidus is what is called as osteoid. So basically what I want you people to understand that osteodostoma is called osteodostoma because osteoid is surrounded by osteoma. Now you can connect this that how prostaglandins are inhibited and how aspirin is giving you relief in the pain. 
So answer is osteodosteoma. <coughs> Young man, road traffic accident, external rotation. See, life is simple. If there is a young patient after RTA, hip, if hip goes into flexion, adduction, internal rotation, it has to be posterior hip dislocation, no doubts about it. If it is flexion, abduction, external rotation, it has to be anterior hip dislocation and there is no doubt about it. <clears throat> So what you can see here is external rotation. So answer obviously has to be anterior hip dislocation. I'm not sure what was the question which was asked because I tried my level best recalling from students. But some people said that they had given a photograph where they had marked a tendon and they had asked which tendon is this. So always remember that when you do this, this tendon, what you're looking at right now is palmaris longus and this tendon, which is there on the lateral side is flexor carpi radialis. One set of students is saying that this was the clinical photograph. Another set of students is saying that they had shown a photograph of anatomical snuff box. So in anatomical snuff box, it is a diamond shaped structure. The anterior boundary is lined by two tendons, which have a common tenosynovial sheath, which are APL and EPB. I may show you the APL and EPB. So this is the diamond shaped structure. Here you have APL and APL and EPB, which have a common tenosynovial sheath, the inflammation of which is called as, by the way, the inflammation of which is called as de Courvain's disease. Okay, just an added inf information. De Courvain's tenosynovitis. The posterior boundary is made by a tendon. What is that called as? EPL. So I've shown you this posterior tendon is basically EPL. So whether it was asked or it was asked, I wanted to give you the explanation which is here in front of you. So these were the questions which were asked in orthopedics in FMG of January 2024. And this is the best recall that I could collect. And uh, I wish all the best to all the aspirants who have appeared for this exam for a great future and a great result and hope to see some shining stories post the results. Thank you and I wish you all the best. Thank you.